Hi, I'm Amy Denoyles and I'm an instructional designer at the Center for Distributed Learning. And I'm Janana Costa. I'm the technical support specialist with Web Courses at UCF Support here at the Center for Distributed Learning. And we'd like to welcome you to Let's Talk About, a new series of discussions we have about teaching online here at UCF. The purpose of these discussions is to share some effective strategies about using web courses at UCF and also to just make sure you're aware of all the great resources that are available to you. So I'm going to dive right in and ask you, Amy, what do you mm -hmm. think is the single most important thing to consider when you're writing your syllabus? In any kind of writing, the most important thing is to think about who's actually going to be reading it, who's the audience and in this case, it's your students. Your syllabus is really the first chance for your students to get excited about the course materials. So it should really answer the question, why should I care about this course? It's definitely important to look at the syllabus from the student's perspective and consider you know, why this would help them attain their educational goals and why they would choose to take this class as opposed to another class. And so this is a great way mm -hmm. to sort of answer the questions that students might be asking themselves about your course. Right, so one example, a student might be wondering what skills am I going to develop through taking this course and how are those skills related to maybe the career that I'm interested in. Those would be good things to explicitly address in the syllabus and that will help them get excited and want to take the course. And faculty can use this opportunity to show their own excitement for the course. If you're teaching this course then you're probably passionate about the subject matter so show that passion through your syllabus. Janan, let's talk about the tone and language of the syllabus first. So even though the syllabus is a contract of sorts, it doesn't have to read like one. Yeah, that is very important. I've seen a lot of syllabi where there was a lot of jargon in the syllabus that I didn't really understand, um, you know, when I was a student. Right. Sometimes when you write a syllabus, you might be writing it for departmental approval or for accreditation purposes, and that all makes sense. And you can keep a version like that but maybe consider another version that's written in a more conversational tone. So something as simple as changing the tense from third person to second person can create a connection between the student and you. So instead of saying mm -hmm. something like, the student should contact the professor if they have questions about their performance in the course, you could just say something like, if you have trouble with the course, please contact me, and that just helps you connect with your students and make it more personable. Right, so it changes the tone of the syllabus so it stops feeling like the syllabus is at the students or about the students, but more for the students. So imagine that you're actually speaking in front of your student. How would you talk? Yeah. Try to mimic that kind of conversation in the syllabus. Absolutely, mm -hmm. and I think tone is so important, especially when uh, you're writing a syllabus for a completely online class mm -hmm. or even a partially online class where you're not having as much face-to-face -face interaction with the students. Um, it's very important to, you know, make a connection with your student and be conversational and kind of build a connection with that student since you might not be seeing them face to face. Right, I agree and it, it does really encourage, an it's an approachable. The yeah. student feels like they can approach you as a real human being. So there's also though, we all know, parts of the syllabus that are a little more technical or dry or you know, like the, the policies for instance, policies and statements, they can mm -hmm. sometimes read a little bit harsh. So we always encourage faculty not to use all caps um, or anything like that in their syllabi <laughs> because that just comes off a little harsh. You don't want right. the student to feel like you're yelling at them or something like that, but some stuff really is important. So mm -hmm. I know that you have an idea of a better way to highlight those types of things. Right, uh, so a couple of things. First, if you've taught the course long enough, you've probably run into some situations that you didn't really, you weren't really prepared for. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes the policy section can start to get longer and longer and longer and maybe more all caps and more ex exclamation <laughs> points come in. But the students that are enrolled in your course, they're brand new and they do not have experience in your course yet. So consider making a frequently asked question section in your syllabus and that way it's a more objective way to address some of the things that you may have encountered in the past. So for instance, a question could be from the student's perspective, what happens if I miss a due date? Mm -hmm. And then you can answer it in a more objective way instead of an all caps, don't miss any due dates. Yeah. Boop, boop, boop. <laughs> Yeah. 
one pet peeve of mine is having to wade through a large syllabus with a bunch of paragraphs that's just so long. And I, I mean, I just mm -hmm. lose interest really quickly when it looks like that. I think we've all been in that situation when there's a document that is just pages of words, 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 even if you want to read it, after a while it can be difficult to read. Yeah. So we have a couple of tips to make it easier. One is to use headings to clearly subset some of the text. Also bulleted lists. One of my favorite things is bulleted lists. Here are some objectives for the, for the course, one, two, three, four, five. It sets it off nicely and it lets the student more easily kind of digest each section of the syllabus so it encourages them to read it more. And another important thing is that faculty members want to engage their students through the syllabus. You want to get them excited about the course mm -hmm. right off the bat. First thing they're reading is the syllabus. Right. So what tips do you have for faculty in order to engage with their students with their syllabus? So one of the things that I've seen that's really easy is for the professor of the course to think about the course and think about the, the readings and things that they're drawing from and to include one or two relevant quotes. So you see sometimes in books, the very first page is a quote and it kind of draws you in and lets you understand what this is going to be about. So including a couple of quotes is a good way to draw the student in. Another way is to use some images. So th again, think about the course material. Are there some pictures or images that you think really summarize it well? Put those in the syllabus. It uh, adds a little flavor to the syllabus beyond just all the text. Yeah, that'll definitely keep it interesting. And I've also seen faculty put um, personal photos in their syllabi. Kind of makes you feel like, you know, there's an actual person behind the screen when I'm taking this online course. That, exactly. Makes yeah. you feel like a real, you're a real person teaching this course. Yeah, and that is very important when you're teaching an online class and you want to connect with your students. <laughs> Another way that I'd like to suggest that you can get your students' attention with your syllabus is you can make your syllabus available to your students before they even register for your class. So there's a tool available here at UCF where students can view a preview of the syllabus while they're doing their class search. So they have to be UCF students and they have to be logged into the portal. And then while they're searching for classes, they can see a little preview of your syllabus that you can make available. and you know, the, it kind of helps them determine which course is best for them. So they can see the syllabus before they even enroll in the class. Yes, exactly. So that helps them make an informed decision about the class, you know, decide whether or not your course is the one that's right for them. And it, it's great for everyone because then once they get into your course, they also they already know what to expect. So that's an interesting way to encourage enrollment in your course even before students start to register for it is give them that sneak preview. Absolutely. Yeah. It's funny you said sneak preview because it's like it's like you're showing them a trailer of your course or it's like the movie poster that kind of captures their attention. And, you know, so they get excited about the class before they've even registered for the class. So that that's a really powerful tool. Um, so that's a feature that can be turned on through your faculty web course manager. And um, you go through the My UCF portal and you'll have an option there. And what it'll do is it'll show students what you have in your web courses at UCF course in your syllabus description. So that's what they'll see when they look at that preview. So earlier we mentioned the required components that all faculty at UCF have to include in their syllabus. So we want to make sure that you know where to find those resources and the, the list of things that you are required to include in your syllabus. Right. Where can they find that? So if you go to the Faculty Center for Teaching and Learning's website, there's an area about the syllabus and it has a nice list of all of the required components that need to be in the syllabus along with some examples and some uh, uh, resources to download to help you, for instance, templates and things like that that can guide you to make sure that you're including all of those components. That site is a great resource, mm -hmm. um, and I also wanted to share that CDL has created a tool to make this step even easier, um, and that is the templator within web courses at UCF. So what that does is um, anytime you go to the rich content editor in web courses at UCF, which is anywhere where you can modify text. So any mm -hmm. page where you can click edit, like your pages, your assignments, um, your syllabus, things right. like that, you'll get the rich content editor. And then there's a button there um, for external tools. Mm -hmm. And what that allows you to do is select templator. And once you select templator, 
there are page templates there that you mm -hmm. can select. So, and there are two for syllabi. So one is just the general syllabus template and it includes all of the uh, sections that you need to include and it includes the policies at the bottom and you just mm -hmm. fill in your information. Um, there's an interactive syllabus template and what it does is it includes all of the same sections but it also has um, an accordion list at the bottom so that you can collapse all of those policies and all that mm -hmm. large text on the bottom so that it's not making your page way too long. Um, and it also gives you a table of contents at the top where students can click on uh, section links and go directly to where they want to go in your syllabus. Right, so both of those options, the syllabus and the interactive syllabus, it contains the same information, the same policies, everything is up to date. The interactive option just is a little bit more robust and has provides a little bit more interactivity within. But they both do the same thing. So Amy, these yes. are all really great suggestions, but we have to consider the fact that sometimes students just are not reading the syllabus. That's kind of the white elephant in the room, is that students may not read the syllabus. There's all kinds of reasons for that, and we already talked about some of those. For instance, the tone, the organization, the structure, is, or do they feel connected? There's mm -hmm. so many reasons. What we want to talk about, though, is what are some ways that you can encourage students to read the syllabus? So there's a couple of things. One is creating a syllabus quiz at the beginning of the course. So it's just a quiz that asks students to uh, evaluate their knowledge based on what they've read in the syllabus. Mm -hmm. So that's one way. Another way is to have a contract of sorts where the student checks a box and says, yes, I have read the syllabus and I'm going to adhere to the policies, sign it, attach it, and that would be kind of a first assignment of sorts. Mm -hmm. If you're interested in either of those strategies, please visit the Teaching Online Pedagogical Repository, which has entries about both of those approaches. And you can even do something more interactive. Um, for instance, with Materia, you can create a game that could um, you know, do a matching game about attendance policies or about the grading rubric or things like that. Um, and it's really simple to do. And this just gets the student interacting with the syllabus. And you can also see if students are understanding the information that you have in the syllabus and things like mm -hmm. that. Have you heard of Easter eggs in movies? I have heard of Easter eggs in movies. So is that when a, the creator of the movie puts like hidden things for people to find? Exactly, yeah. So there's like these hidden things in, in the movies and sometimes people see them and sometimes they don't and people get all excited about catching them. And um, so that's something that you can incorporate into your syllabus. Um, you, I've seen instructors do something like where they sit at the bottom of the syllabus, it'll say something like, if you know if you've gotten this far please email me and say such and such or with a specific subject line in the in the email or something like that so then you can just get your students excited about it mm -hmm. um, and you can just also gauge how many students are reading to the end of the syllabus so that's, that's a good way to determine whether or not you're reaching them with your syllabus that's true so those are two more interesting ways of engaging with the students is games and Easter eggs that actually encourages students to interact with the syllabus, which is beyond just reading a static mm -hmm. document. But speaking of static documents, there are some way, helpful ways for students to be able to take the syllabus with them. Yes, we always encourage faculty to include a file that the students can download, um, and it should be a PDF file. We recommend that it be a PDF file just so that students can um, you know, save it, print it out, and it'll look the same no matter which device they're using or things like that. And you also don't want a syllabus out there that can be edited or where right. portions can be deleted from it. So a PDF is a good way to guard against that. That's great. Some yeah. students just want to be able to print it out. Yeah, I know that mm -hmm. for me, I, at the beginning of the semester, I always will print out my syllabi, I'll put them in the folder for the class, and, okay. that's, and I reference that, and I just check stuff off or highlight things. So some students really do appreciate having a hard copy like that. Also, it's helpful to link back to your syllabus throughout the course. So Web Courses at UCF makes it easy for you to embed a link back to the syllabus within assignments or discussions. It's a great way, announcements maybe, mm -hmm. just a great way to remind students after midterms, right? After spring break, they come back, what? Okay, where am I now? It's a great way to remember this part and here's the course policy about it. Definitely. It's a great way to continue to keep the syllabus 
evolving and alive. Some faculty will even break out their syllabus into multiple pages in web courses at UCF, um, you know, just because they want students to see that all of these sections are important and maybe you don't want them scrolling down the whole, you know, through a long page. Mm -hmm. So some faculty will use a module zero or a syllabus module where it'll just be their, the components of the syllabus, but then they each have their own page so that they stand out. Right, so the students will be able to quickly jump to the section that's most needed. Mm -hmm. I've seen, for instance, faculty will talk about, say there's a final project, they'll have a final project page, and so the student might not need it right then, but you know they're going to refer back to it later, so it's good to include something like that in that kind of a module. Also, you might have requirements that are beyond the typical syllabus. So for instance, you might require them to use a particular technology mm -hmm. that's beyond the general expectations. Might be good to create a page in that, in that area too to kind of get their attention and yeah. have them realize what, what's expected. So we've just covered a lot of information and I hope that we've given you some useful tips and ideas to consider when you sit down to create your syllabus next time. One of the main closing points we want to make is that your syllabus is an evolving document. So Think about what worked and what didn't work and continue to improve upon it each time you teach the course. It's always a work in progress. If you have questions or need any assistance, please feel free to contact web courses at UCF support and we'd be happy to help you. And links to all of the resources that we mentioned will be available on the Let's Talk About webpage. Join us next time where we're going to be talking about the gradebook in web courses at UCF. Thank, Thank you. you.